Here, we're going to focus on units and zero divisors. An element A in a ring with identity is called a unit if there exists some u in the ring so that when you multiply a and u, their product is the identity element in the ring, and the same for u times a. So in this case, we call that element u the multiplicative inverse of a, and we denote it by a inverse here by using a negative 1 as a superscript on a. So let's look at an example. If we consider a ring that we all know and love, the integers, what are the units here? Well, the only units in the integers are plus and minus 1. And why is this? There is no other integer that you can multiply by another integer and get 1. So let's take 3, for instance. If we try to find another integer to multiply by 3 to get 1, we can't. If we multiply 3 times 1 third, we could get 1, but 1 third is not an integer. So it, told, it turns out that the only integers, excuse me, that the only units in the integers are 1 and negative 1. Let's consider another ring. Here, let's consider the set Q of rational numbers. Here, every element except 0 is a unit. So if we go back to our earlier thought of the number 3, any element has its inverse, which is namely its reciprocal. So 3 times 1 third is equal to 1, which is equal to 1 third times 3. So the inverse of a non-zero rational number is its reciprocal. And then finally, let's look at the integers modulo 4. So recall that this is the set of congruence classes, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so what are the units going to be here? We're looking for an element so that when we multiply it by some other element in the ring, we get 1. So if we start with 0, obviously that is not a unit. 0 can never be a unit. If we look at 1, well, that works. Namely, 1 is its own inverse. So 1 times 1 equals 1, which is the same as 1 times 1. So 1 is a unit. 2 is not a unit, but 3 is. And that's because 3 times 3 equals 1 equals 3 times 3. And I probably didn't need to write that twice, but you get the idea. Um, so the reason that this is 1 is because 3 times 3 is 9. But if we're in Z mod 4Z, 9 is congruent to 1 mod 4. So the units here are 1 and 3. And if you note, 1 and 3 are the only elements that are relatively prime to 4 in the integers. Next, let's talk about zero divisors. So we say that an element A is a zero divisor if A is not zero, and also if there exists a non-zero element C so that the product of A and C is zero, or vice versa if C times A is zero. So basically what this is saying is that an element is a zero divisor if you can multiply two non-zero elements together and get zero. So let's look at an example. First, we consider z mod 4z again. And we're looking for zero divisors. So what we're looking for are non-zero elements 
so that we'll look. Okay, so let's phrase this succinctly. If we are looking for a non-zero element, C, so between 1, 2, and 3, so that when we multiply it by another non-zero element, we end up getting 0. So let's start with 1. That's a non-zero element. When we multiply 1 by 2 or 3, we don't get 0. However, if we consider 2, if we multiply 2 by itself, we get 4, which is equal to 0. And so that means 2 is a 0 divisor. and z mod 4z. Let's consider the other two rings from our previous slide, z and q. z and q, the integers and the rational numbers, have no zero divisors. And why is this? That's because they both satisfy axiom 11 which stated the following. If a times b was equal to 0, then a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. So what this says is that the integers and the rational numbers do not have zero divisors because they're an integral domain. And so that leads us to the following fact that we'll end this with. An integral domain contains no zero divisors.